My name is Imacus Njinga Okofu Ababio. I was born in New York City and I returned home to the land of my ancestors, Ghana, West Africa, at age 50. And I've lived here for the past 25 years. This wall, um, this is Nanimbra. Mm -hmm. Nanimbra was the traditional ruler in Cape Coast. And he invited my husband and I and the first visitors in 1987. I was born in New York City, raised in New York City, went to university in New York City. Professionally, I am a human resource administrator. For 14 years, I worked as a human resource administrator for a major teaching hospital. I don't want to be no African. The pictures that the media painted of Africa the only Africa I saw was Tarzan and Jane, some white man flying through the air. Oh, okay. <laughs> with, the, with boy riding on an elephant and stuff like that. Would you want to come to Africa? Nobody's wearing clothes? No, 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 no. I didn't want to come to Africa at all. Because there was nothing good that was told to us about Africa. Nothing. I came here and saw a different kind of Africa. We went to the slave forts and dungeons. You know, there's no air, small windows. The place still smells. You can still smell it. And I remember going through the men's dungeon. That was traumatic, you know, because you kept thinking to yourself, why would someone do this because they didn't tell us about this. I never heard about this in school. Then I went into the women's dungeon. And when the group was leaving, I asked the man, I just would like to stay behind for a few minutes. This is the women's dungeon. And as I stood there in that dungeon, you know, the room started like filling up. There were women in there. They were women, they, they were naked, some of them were half-dressed, they were crying, people were screaming, and I remember being terrified, screaming. And then it was like, all of a sudden, you know, it's not even all of a sudden, like gradually, I could feel people touching me, you know, soothing me, saying, it's all right, you're home, you're safe, welcome back don't cry and they just kept you know how someone comforts you then all of a sudden it was like just like they came they went away little at a time it was like until I was sitting on the ground all by myself and I couldn't move but then when I got up and I came out of the dungeons it was like it was dark getting almost to nighttime but I knew when I crossed that threshold and came out of that dungeon that I would never be the same person again. Never. And I knew then that Africa, Ghana, was going to be my home. And in 1990, we moved. We packed up everything. We sold everything that we could sell. All we couldn't sell, we gave away. All we couldn't give away, we threw away. And we just packed up a few things, like my books and things like that, and we came to Africa. They thought we were mad. Even today, people think you're crazy when you say you're coming to Africa. If you say you're going to Paris, they go, oh, bring me some perfume, it's so wonderful. But when you say you're going to Africa, they would ask, why would you leave America to come here to suffer? I said, really, this is suffering? I suffered in America, you know, we, I lived through the civil rights movement. Everything we ever got in America, we fought for. I don't hate America. I don't like it. Hate is a strong word, but I, I don't like it. I love, I love Africa, okay? And everything in Africa is not perfect. And I didn't fall out of my tree house, so I'm not going to where there's a war. I look for peace, but I love Africa and what Africa represents for me and prayerfully for my children and my grandchildren, my great-grands, and for those yet unborn.